Hi everybody. So today we are going to review quickly uh, rotation of the Earth, that is the consequences we get from the Earth rotating around itself. And we're also going to take a look at the shape of the Earth and why that matters and how that affects our everyday life. So, do you remember what we talked about how the Earth goes around the Sun, that's called the revolution, and then it also rotates around itself, kind of like this, right? It just spins around itself. And because of that, we get a couple of things. So one of the things that we got, if you remember this chart, was that we get a chance to warm up and cool down. If we didn't spin, one side of the Earth would be so hot that everything would be on fire, and the other side of the Earth would be so cold that everything would be frozen. Now the good news is, is the Earth doesn't and won't stop turning around itself. That is the command and the law that it got from Mother Nature when the universe was created. It rotates around and around and around. So we get a chance to warm up and cool down. When we're in the light, we are getting nice heat and energy from the sun. And then as we turn away from the sun, then we have a chance to kind of cool down and make sure that we don't get too hot. So that's one thing that we get from the rotation of the earth that we talked about in a previous lesson. Another thing that we get from the rotation of the earth is, you know, here we have the word dawn. Dawn, this is the same word as sunrise. So what happens is, is the earth starts to spin towards the sun and here on this side of the earth, we're getting a nice bit of sunlight. Now up here, as you can see, denoted by this red mark, this is noon. It is at this point that we are getting the most direct sunlight. The earth keeps spinning and we get into the evening we're all having dinner, and then the sun sets. That's also known as dusk. The sun sets, and then we go back into the Earth's shadow. And this is nighttime when it's dark out. And then the Earth continues to spin, and dawn, or sunrise happen, and we come back into the light, and we have a chance to warm up again. We can see during our day we're having lunch and playing recess, and then we come in for afternoon work period, and then we go home, and then we get to play and we eat dinner and then we get ready for bedtime around sunset and then it's nighttime and we sleep through the night and then it happens all over again forever and ever and ever and ever it goes round and round and round okay we also looked at this chart see from this chart here we have separated our day into 24 hours, okay? This bottom half is nighttime, and this top half is daytime. And this chart is showing us, well here it is at 6 a.m. at sunrise, or dawn. And as we go, 7, 8, here's 8.30, we just get to school, 9, 10, 11, 11.30 is when we go to lunch. And then from 11.30 to 1, we're outside at recess. And then from 1 until 3.30, which is right here, we are doing our afternoon work period and oral reading and jobs. And then we get to maybe go to aftercare or we go home. And then right about here, 18 hours in the, into the day at 6 p.m. when the sun starts to go down and we have our half of our day, 24-hour day that's spent as nighttime. So looking at this chart, where do you think the coldest part of the day is? Do you remember? It's right here. Because this is the point here that we have been away from the sun's light for the longest. We have, you know, we started to turn here, and this is where we're starting to turn kind of back towards the sun. So we have been out of the sunlight for about 12 hours here. This is the coldest we'll be because it's the longest that we are out of the sunlight. And then we start to warm up. Where's the hottest point of the day? That's right here, right around 1 o'clock. Most people think it'd be noon. But this here, this is right when we start to turn away from the sun and start going towards the shadow. And this is where we've been the longest in the sun. So 
we've only really been in, you know, the longest we've been in getting direct sunlight is this part. This is where it's hottest and then we start to turn away and we can begin to cool down, okay? So we get night and day, we get a chance to warm up and cool down because the earth rotates around itself. Let's take a look at my earth. All I have here at home is Emily's Play-Doh. So this is a ball of Play-Doh. And this is roughly the shape of the earth. Now I know that we often say, well, the earth is a sphere, right? It's kind of like a ball. Its proper term is an oblique spheroid because it's not a perfect sphere because we have mountains and oceans and it's even kind of bowed out a little bit in the middle. But here we have the shape of our earth and we have sunlight, what we can do is we can imagine the sun hitting the earth with these toothpicks. Oopsie. Kind of like this. So if we look at this, we can see that here, right about the center of the earth, that it's making a right angle. Or for those of you who have been looking at the lines lesson, it's coming in perpendicular. So it's kind of making a T, right? With the part of the earth, we have a corner, perfect L right there. But the higher we go up, we no longer have a perfect T, do we? We have an acute angle, for those of you who practice at the angle. See, it's almost making triangle. Can you see that right here? And then we can also see that down here. And then we can see a little bit of it at start here. The rays that come in or hit perpendicularly are called perpendicular rays of the sun. Now the rays that come up here that are hitting kind of more at an angle, they're making that acute angle, we call those oblique rays of the sun. So oblique and perpendicular should sound familiar to you from our line lessons. If it doesn't, I want you to go back, take a look at those line lessons. They're really helpful. When we see the curve of the earth, we can see that the rays of the sun are not hitting perpendicularly here. So why does that matter? Let's take a look. So here I have a chart. So when we look at this side of the chart, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five rays of sunlight hitting right here at the center of the earth. And this is how much space they have to warm up, okay? When we look at this side, we have one, two, three, four, five rays of sunlight, the same amount of sunlight, but let's look at the space that it's covering. That's a much bigger space here than it is here, isn't it? And it's the same amount of light that's hitting there. So I want you to imagine that we were at school one day and it was cold out as the middle of the winter and we were all in the before and after care room, which at our school is, you know, a little small room, it's nice and cozy and we turn on the heater and we got nice and warm while we played and spent time together. And then it was time to go downstairs to our classroom. Now our classroom is very large. There's two sides to it. And I want you to imagine that we took that same little heater that heated up that small space and we put it in our classroom. Do you think we're gonna be as warm in our classroom with that one heater than we were up, as we were upstairs? No, it's the same little heater, but it has to heat a much bigger space. That's the same thing here. The same little heater only has to heat this little space. When it comes up here, the same little heater has to heat a much bigger space, right? And you can see here the perpendicular rays pretty well, can't you? They're really making a T. And here you can see those super acute angles and they become smaller and smaller angles the closer we get to the pole. I have a little experiment that I wanna show you that's gonna help us understand this. Okay, so Minnie the Kitty and I are gonna show you this experiment. Here we have a black piece of paper, a flashlight, this piece of chalk. You do not have to have a piece of chalk this huge. Small pieces of chalk are just fine. So I'm going to turn on my flashlight and as we can see we have a circle of light on our paper. 
So this is the perpendicular ray of the sun. Remember how it hits like a T? It makes two L's, or for those of you who have had angles, it makes a right angle. So I'm gonna hold it about this height, and I'm gonna trace around that light as best as I can when not holding onto the paper. There. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt, I'm keeping it at the same height, but I'm tilting the light to be an oblique ray of the sun. So it's the same amount of light, it's just tilted a different way. Instead of being up straight, you can see it, the same amount of light has to cover more space. So think back to our heater analogy in the classroom. Same amount of heat and energy having to cover a bigger space. This space is gonna be much warmer because all of that light's concentrated right there. But now we have to spread it out when we have an oblique ray of sun. So again, this is something that easy that you can do at home as an experiment. All you need is a flashlight chalk. It doesn't have to be black paper. It just has to be a, a dark enough paper where your flashlight will show up on it. So thank you very much for coming to our lesson. Quick review. The shape of the earth matters because it affects the way that the sun hits the surface of the earth. So here at the middle, we can see that it can hit it very directly. While here, as we get up towards the curve of the planet, it's not hitting it directly and it's having to spread out over a larger part of the, of the Earth. So what do you know about the poles compared to the equator? What's it like at the equator? It's pretty warm. Sometimes it can be pretty darn hot. What's it like at our poles? It can be really, really cold, can't it? Yeah, it can. So if you would like for follow-up work, you can do the chalk experiment. You can get some clay or Play-Doh and make the model of the rays of the sun hitting the earth. You can make this chart if you would like. You can make any of the charts from the rotation of the earth if you would like to. But next we are going to talk about um, how the earth, the earth's axis, as well as why we get seasons. Okay, so that's something that you can look out for probably next week. All right, guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me, all right? Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.